Check out the book Granddaddy by author Cavis Adams. Granddaddy is a close up view into the distant past and back again, a stream of generational consciousness that slows to show the story of a lone black family in white America. From the fiery era of sharecropping in the South to the deathly cold industry of the modern North, the reader will migrate in heart and minds along the span of three generations, finding ourselves finally close to how we came to be today. As lived by a lone family torn between time and place, this book tells the closer story of a greater reality, that of the great black migrations, from a racially segregated South up to the equally fragmented Northern states and what was lost by a people along the way. Make sure to check out the book, Granddad. Details in the description box. A billionaire investor gives a truly life-changing commencement speech. He promised the entire graduating class at Morehouse College that he will pay off all of their student loans. CNN's Victor Blackwell is live at Morehouse College in Atlanta with more. Victor, it almost seemed as though the administration of Morehouse didn't see that coming either. They didn't. Allison, if Robert F. Smith had pledged to pay off the student loans of just one graduate, that would have been enough to qualify for the good stuff segment, right? But to do it for nearly 400 graduates, it's almost unbelievable. What seemed like a typical commencement address at Morehouse College. Classmates, class of 2019. You look beautiful. Turned out to be an unprecedented gift to graduates. This is my class, 2019. My family is making a grant to eliminate their student loans. Billionaire investor Robert F. Smith announces that he is paying off all of the student debt for the 396 graduates of the historically black college, estimated to be tens of millions of dollars. The stunning announcement leaves students speechless at first. We're like, I don't think he really said that. Uh, let's try again, but then when we thought about it, we're like, oh yeah, yes sir, yes sir, he said it. Then they erupt in chants. The announcement even surprises the faculty and staff on stage. MVP! <laughs> I've seen lots of graduations. I've raised hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, and I've never seen a gift like this. In his speech, Smith stresses the importance of community, especially the many people who helped him along the way. And it is in that spirit that he says he chose to wipe away the student's debt. We will all be measured by how much we contribute to the success of the people around us. Graduate Elijah Nestle Dormius is taking that advice to heart. He is one of nine children and is using his newfound freedom from student debt to help his family, specifically his mother. She's diligently worked year after year, year after year, fought for jobs year after year. Even when she didn't get it, she came back, she said, son, you have to continue pushing. So now it's just like, I can actually do that. Smith also tells the students that nothing can replace hard work and encourages them to embrace the grind. Our world is getting smaller by the day, and you are equipped with every tool to make it your own. The college president says average debt is somewhere between twenty-six and $30,000 per student, although one student has roughly $90,000 worth of debt. And no, no doubt those, those men are grateful for what was announced yesterday, but what those of us who graduated with five figures of student loan debt know, hello, that the people who have been paying student loans back for five, 10, 15 years appreciate is that this is a type of liberation for these young men, that they can start businesses earlier, buy homes sooner, start their families, take risks. John and Allison, absolutely life-changing, life-changing what happened here at Morehouse yesterday. The burden that was lifted for those young men, you just cannot be overstated at this point. I agree 100%, Victor. Absolutely. Yeah, he sent, set their lives on a different trajectory yesterday. 
they will have they will be able to make different choices different job choices different life choices because they are not saddled with that albatross it was such i mean just such a life altering gift a real freedom yeah thanks victor Hey guys, it is Nicole here back on this Monday night. I hope you guys are all doing great out there and welcome back to Nicole's View. So I wanted to speak on this because it's one of those feel good stories. It's a trending topic. It's a story that's actually positive. Um, it's great news and it's something that we could all use, right? Um, so you have here Mr. Robert F. Smith, a investor. Um, very wealthy um, here in America so he basically gifted these graduates at Morehouse congratulations to all the graduates uh, at Morehouse um, he gifted them the gift of having no student loans okay and when I heard this story and I saw the video I, I felt like I was one of them I'm like oh my god no student loans how would that feel oh my god i don't even know you know it's just you know i was happy as if it were me um for those of you who went to school went to colleges went to universities you know um student loan debt if you were not lucky enough to get on a scholarship win a scholarship um you know you had to deal with it you you had to end up paying for it um, and for those of you who didn't go to school afterwards, after graduating high school, lucky you because you don't have to deal with student loan debt. You may have to deal with other loan uh, debts, excuse me, but <laughs> um, student loan debt is just one of those things that it's 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 crippling this economy in a lot of ways. But, you know, it's one of those things that they're going to have to eventually do something about. Um, but anyway, for those men today they don't have to deal with it and i'm so happy for them i am so happy for them because they can basically have a clean slate um so whatever they may do whether they go um and work for someone else or create their own businesses i mean it's just awesome it's awesome it won't be on their credit you know what i'm saying guys y'all know what i'm saying it's just, it's amazing. So to, to see Mr. Smith do this for them, um, I am so, so happy, so proud. Um, we need more stuff like this. We we could use it, okay? And um, I can only hope that this class, um, the class of 2019 at Morehouse, I can only hope that they pay it forward for someone else, for other people. Um, be successful and, and, and help and pass it on so we can just keep this going. All right. Um, so with all of that, here's just a little background about him. Uh, he was born December 1st, 1962. Uh, he is an investor and he was a former chemical engineer, um, investment banker. He is the founder, chairman, and CEO of private equity firm Vista Equity Partners. In 2018, Smith was ranked by Forbes magazine as the 163rd richest person in America. He was number 480 on Forbes 2018 list of the world's billionaires with a net worth of $4.4 billion, although I heard somewhere else that now he's worth like $5.5 billion, so it's just going up. Uh, Smith was also included in Vanity Fair's uh, new establishment list. In 2017, Smith was named by Forbes as one of the 100 greatest living business minds. In 2018, a cover story Forbes declared Smith the wealthiest african-american surpassing the devil mammy herself oprah winfrey and you know what's so funny um i was watching uh, inside edition today and they were talking about the story and then they included oprah in it of course which they really didn't need to but anyway they included oprah in the story 
And then they showed a tweet of someone tweeting at Oprah saying, oh, Oprah, you should have done this. You can you could have paid this off. You could have paid my loan or it was something like that. And Oprah Winfrey actually replied. OK, <laughs> she must be feeling some sort of way because she actually took the time to reply to someone just basically trolling her. Right. And she goes, oh, I've paid X amount of money in scholarships and I've done this and I've paid that and I've put this person through school and all this and that. And and okay, fine, whatever. Right. But, you know, I just found it interesting because, you know, Oprah, she's feeling it because that stunt she pulled earlier this year with that disgusting low life trash mockumentary that she supported, um, She's doing everything she can to help uh, rehabilitate her image right now. So they also included that she was somewhere, I think in New Jersey, and she had given the school like half a million dollars to keep it open during the summer or something like that. And for faculty and staff or whatever and educational programs. So she's doing all these little stunts because she knows that what she did was absolutely pathetic it was lower than low so you're gonna see oprah she's gonna be out here doing whatever she can to kind of oh I, I gotta clean this up you know you're, you're never gonna live that down oprah you 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 have no one but yourself to blame for that and, and yeah okay so screw her anyway i don't want this video to be about her anyway so let's see um so mr smith is um a graduate of Cornell University and Columbia Business School. And this is the next part I wanted to speak on. Before his second wife, yes, <laughs> his first wife he was married to, um, he was married to a woman by the name of Suzanne McFadden Smith. They married in 1988. And they were together for over 22 years and they ended up separating in 2010 and their divorce was finalized in 2014. Together they had three children and now uh, his second wife he married in 2015 and they have two children together and it goes on to say that uh, oh interesting. He actually owns a home right here in my city, right here in Austin, Texas. Okay. I didn't know. Wow. Who knew? Um, He also owns a home in Malibu and in New York. And he bought a home for $59 million in New York City. Wow. I can only just, we can only dream about that kind of stuff, right? (laughs) But anyway, um, so with all of that, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I ran across this tweet and All I could do was just shake my head and just say, not now, not now, not now. Now, we all know that there are a lot of us out here who may not be a big fan of interracial relationships, interracial marriages, but I'm not one of those people who is going to get out here and say, you know, you know, just dog out people for it. I'm not going to get out of here and just go hard in the paint because at the end of the day, people are going to do what they want to do. I cannot control people. You cannot control who people are with. That is who they're with. If they fell in love with that person, good luck, whatever. All I say is don't get out here and buffoon and down your own that's that's my main thing you know what i'm saying don't get out here and start blaming you know this this person and that person and 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 the black woman ain't this and the black man ain't that if you're not doing that then hey knock yourself out you like it i love it but you know for me personally and you know I do love black love, but that's not to say that I'm going to get out of here and just dog anyone else out. That is all about preference. Okay. So anyway, so this tweet here is just one of those things that it makes black women look so just, it makes us look desperate. It makes us look scorned. It makes us look unhinged and we 
and when I mean we, I don't really mean all of us, but I'm just speaking collectively. Well, I guess it is. I, I guess it is all of us. But black women who are like this, okay, <laughs> um, we we need to get out of this. This jealous, this vitriol, this, you know, I know a lot of you out there feel some type of way when you see stuff like this, when you see men like Robert F. Smith with, you know, women <laughs> like this that he's married to. It's easy to get angry, to get mad, to do this and say that. But at the end of the day, were you honestly going to be in Robert F. Smith's circle? We have to be realistic, folks. I mean, if you if you were not going to be in this man's space, I don't even know why you would even get upset. If you're not even in the tax bracket in that circle, you wouldn't have been with him anyway. Okay, so for me, I'm just thinking realistically, okay? That's just what it is. When you make money like that, women like me, <laughs> it's not going to be a lot of us in it. It's going to be very slim, if any. So that's how I look at someone like him. It's just, it is kind of what it is. You know, that's not to say that he couldn't find a black woman, but if you're just not in that in that group, the chances are slim to none. Okay, and uh, a lot of us just has to stop doing this publicly. Even if you felt this way, just just talk amongst yourself about it because it just makes you look bad. It makes you look um, insecure and just. And jealous spirited and, and it, you, you look like a fool because for a story like this, I wouldn't use that. This is too positive of a story and it's helping our people. So if it were me, if I were one of those Morehouse graduates, I don't care who he's married to. I don't care if he's married to a plastic doll. Okay. If he said, I believed in you guys and I'm going to pay off all your student loan debt, do you think I care who he's married to? This man is about to give me <laughs> a big shot in life and that will carry on. We need to stop being so tunnel vision. Look at the bigger picture. You know, and, and I'll, ne I'll never get it. I'll never get it. Yes, I get it. But at the same time, why publicly embarrass yourself? Why look like a fool? Because people are passing that around and you're just going to look silly. You're going to look silly. You're going to look oh, mad, angry, scorned. Just stop. We need to start rising above it. Start focusing on how we can be better so we don't have to put out tweets and messages like that over social media, you know, improve upon yourself so you can attract, maybe not a Robert F. Smith, but someone like him, okay? That's what we need to focus on doing, improving ourselves so you don't have to be angry and mad and look who he with. It always got to be like that. You know, you know what I'm saying? I get it. I get it. That's not to say... I haven't done that before, but that, but with maturity, you get older. You're just like, you know what? Was I really going to meet someone like him <laughs> anyway? So just let that go. Women who feel like that, black women who feel like that, let it go. You, you are not going to control who people are going to be with. Let it go. Improve upon yourself and, and just keep it moving. Okay. Just keep it moving. And technically, you got to give it to him. He did marry a black woman, although she looks biracial, uh, Miss Suzanne uh, McFadden. But from, you know, most would say, would just say she's black. <laughs> you know, he has three black children. Um, so 
it's at least it's not like he just totally ignored black women. You know, you, you got to give him some credit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's just how I feel about it. It's just unfortunate. This is great news. This is excellent news. This is a group of people who can pass it on. And I'm hoping that's what they do. I'm hoping they don't screw it up. These men, y'all, y'all got it. Y'all can do it. I'm not going to say it's easy, but to have a clean slate, you're, 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 it's good. That's good. Just keep it going. Keep it going is all I say. But um, yeah, come on. Come on, women. Come on, my black women that, that feel like this, this, this woman here. We, we got to let that go. We got to let it go. If they're not down, downing black women and they're with other women, if they're not out here doing suspect stuff, saying suspect stuff, it's just not worth it. Let it go. Let it go. Like that song from Frozen, let it go. Because <laughs> it's, it's pointless. So anyway... Uh, yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. Congratulations to the class of 2019 at Morehouse. Much success. Uh, thank you, Mr. Robert F. Smith. Um, and I hope this brother, I, you know, now that everybody is really looking into him, I really hope that, uh, he's protected, if you know what I mean. Um, because we see what's going on right now. And God forbid they try to come for him. You know, to me, it's like I kind of like the fact that he was under the radar. But when you see stuff like this, you know, the spotlight's on you. And now you're going to have every weirdo looking and seeing and seeing what can they do to get closer in his uh, orbit. So, you know... I'm sure for the most part he has that covered, but you can never be too sure. Not in this country. Okay? <laughs> Not in this country. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.